There have been stories about what's been happening to people who work at the American Embassy in Moscow. The stories concern radiation. First, it was said the Russians were either bugging or jamming embassy intelligence equipment, and that they were using microwaves to do that. And that that was getting embassy people sick. Two American Embassy employees in Moscow may be suffering from cancer of the lymph glands, and that Ambassador Walter Stessel is suffering from pernicious anemia. Soviet Union has admitted that some radiation exists, but the government newspapers Vestia dismissed it as ordinary, non-dangerous electromagnetic activity, possibly caused by the embassy. There is no reason to believe that those microwaves have caused any illness, but U.S. personnel are concerned over published reports that the microwaves may have caused cancer in a few cases. Soviet technicians say radioactivity levels in the U.S. embassy are at better than safe levels. The State Department is considering taking electronic eavesdropping equipment off the Moscow embassy roof so the Russians will stop using microwaves to try to jam it. As Vestia said, reports that the radiation was caused by Russian snooping devices are an invention with a foul smell. Tornadoes last night and today killed three persons in Arkansas. And... I'm holding here a measuring instrument, and from the readings, we can say that the microwave radiation in this room is, I would say, in biblical proportions or astronomical proportions. It's approximately one million billion times above natural background, which we had just 50 or 100 years ago. So the radiation levels nowadays are enormously high compared to what cells have been developed in. They are not part of the normal universe. That is a completely new type of radiation. In the beginning of the 1980s, very few were electrosensitive. But uh, today it's uh, well over 10%, I think, and the trend is pointing at uh, close to 50% will have one or the other type of sensibility uh, within uh, the next uh, five, 10 years. Les parlementaires conscients de ça et la commission euh, qui, qui défend le business. How independent are the international organizations that are supposed to protect us? I don't like to go into town uh, anymore because the radiation levels are so high now, so uh, you feel it, you feel symptoms. I think most people who become aware of what this radiation might cause feel the radiation quite quickly now. I'm a Swedish investigating journalist. I've written two books 
on the issue of mobile phone health risks. My work uh, in this issue started in 2002 in connection with the massive rollout of 3G in Sweden. Quite immediately discovered that the information from the industry and the authorities was not true. In fact, uh, there were already then a lot of scientific studies showing that this radiation could be a major health risk. The reason I wanted to investigate the health effects of electromagnetic fields actually go back to the 1970s and 80s. And at that time in Sweden, there was an introduction of personal computers and very soon people started to report skin problems. I still continue trying to investigate the health effects of various forms of man-made electromagnetic fields. For instance, heart rate variability, when you expose people to the microwaves, what happens then with the heart rate? Also, we had studies on the red blood cells and the formations of clumps in the blood, and also to investigate the functional impairment called electrohypersensitivity. Every human being is electrosensitive. But the question is, would there also be people that are electro-hypersensitive, meaning that they will pick up fields, signals, whatever, that the rest of us doesn't feel, and in that way they will act like the classical canary bird in the coal mine. They will react as biological sensors to something the rest of the population so far doesn't react to. Yo he estado muchos años mal. Cuando yo empecé a tener síntomas muy fuertes, que ya distorsionaban totalmente mi posibilidad de hacer una vida normal, empecé a, vamos, a no tener nada de fuerza, dolores de cabeza fuertísimos, como con calambres, una sensación de permanente mal cuerpo, como ganas de vomitar. Tenía taquicardias, mucha confusión mental, vamos, de hecho estuve medio encamada, ¿no? Que casi no podía con mi alma. Y bueno, pues estaba recibiendo radiación muy fuerte de una antena que debieron instalar por aquel momento. Yo ahora mismo no puedo estar bien en esta casa. O sea, yo de repente aquí ahora me pega un bajón y me quedo pues hecha mierda. Lo que, sonara, lo que sonaba era un inalámbrico sin parar, tres horas encendido. No lo sé. Hostia, chapo, luego ves otra puta tarde más perdida de mi vida. Estoy harta. Ya no puedo funcionar, es que ya puedo no saber. Me preguntas cómo me llamo y no te lo puedo decir. O intento mantener una conversación y ya no entiendo. Yo escucho las palabras, pero yo no las entiendo. Respecto a las personas que afirman eh, que se encuentran mal eh, por, porque se ha instalado una antena en el tejado de su casa o por, o por el uso del teléfono móvil, yo creo que, eh, primero, eh, que es verdad. O sea, eh, se encuentran mal, dicen que se encuentran mal y evidentemente se encuentran mal. Y se encuentran mal porque se ha puesto la antena, sí pero no por las radiaciones electromagnéticas de la antena. Eso es, eso es importante. O sea, ellos se encuentran mal y eso es un problema psicosomático, probablemente. Hombre, yo tengo la esperanza que voy a conseguir una vida digna fuera de la influencia de estas radiaciones. El público no es consciente de que con independencia de, a lo mejor de, lo, de la telefonía móvil o estas cosas que son más aparentes, vivimos en un baño de ondas electromagnéticas continuo. O sea, de una parte las que provienen del sol, que no son pocas, y pasando por la televisión, en las emisoras de la policía, las, las ambulancias, a cualquiera que proponga eh, la desaparición de la telefonía móvil de, bueno, y de todo lo demás también, ¿no? porque todo lo demás que también emite radiación electromagnética, pues si cerramos, cerramos todo. Eso creo que muy poca gente estaría dispuesta a volver al siglo XVIII.
visto desde fuera, o sea, lo que parece es que tú estás muy pendiente de algo, ¿no? Entonces que podría ser una obsesión o, o una fijación, un problema psicológico, se podría decir, ¿no? Es que a esa gente que lo piensa le diría que les daría esa sensibilidad una semana. Nada más. Porque cuando... Cuando no tienes casi energía, ni a lo mejor un día, ni para hacerte la comida o para bajar a comprarte comida o casi no puedes ir a trabajar, estar todo el rato intentando demostrar que lo que te pasa te pasa, pues, pues es muy duro, ¿no? Lo que sí parece evidente es que los efectos de existir no pueden ser muy grandes. Eso está bastante claro. Todos los seres vivos viven en radiación electromagnética y estamos preparados para, para vivir en esas condiciones. O sea que, entonces, si alguien quisiera vivir libre de radiación electromagnética, pues no sé cómo podría hacerlo. Tendría que marcharse del planeta. Everyone nowadays, in all countries all over the world, are 24-7 whole body irradiated wherever they are. So in that sense, the whole biotope, everything living on the planet, is at jeopardy. They were not developed in an evolution based on microwaves. The natural levels of microwave radiation here on this planet are extremely low. And suddenly we turn a knob and start to send out, and all these signals hit your body, go through your body, and the question is, is it built for it? And of course it's not. These electromagnetic fields and waves and signals, they carry energy, and it's like pouring energy into any kind of biological system. You will have alterations, changes, and of course cell growth, for instance, and cell growth is the same as cancer. Scientists have also shown that, for instance, microwaves can destroy the bonds in the DNA molecule, which is the basis of your genetic material, and such damages could be the starting point, for instance, for cancer development. So it's very serious data. El uso prolongado durante mucho tiempo y, y en condiciones no apropiadas pues puede incrementar ligeramente en un riesgo moderado a pequeño el, el riesgo de un determinado efecto que aún se desconoce, no sabemos. Yo, yo, yo quiero matizar eso. Sí, matízalo Alejandro porque... Yo no hablaría de factores de riesgo, bueno. hemos hablado de indicios y hemos explicado cuáles eran los indicios. De momento, como digo, no hay pruebas de nocividad. Cuando son jóvenes, no. No usar teléfono móvil. Por el momento. Se asume, en principio, que a esos niveles no hay riesgo. Los, los dispositivos de manos libres, eh, antes del establecimiento de llamada, pues eh, no, poner, no aplicárselo en la, en la zona de la, del oído. No hay ningún indicio de efectos que se pueda considerar nocivos. Utilizarlo en sitios eh, al aire libre también, eh, en el coche lo menos posible. No hay, la física que conocemos no nos dice que eso sea nocivo, pero caramba, estamos expuestos todos, están expuestos nuestros hijos. Unfortunately, for the radio frequency fields and for the mobile phones, we are in a situation of scientific uncertainty. I'm convinced we need uh, more research at the moment because everybody is, is, is a mobile phone user, it's children using it, it's elderly using it, sick people using it. So we have to be certain and this, uh, this demands uh, more uh, investigations.
International Agency for Research on Cancer is a research institution. So we are doing research and trying to identify the causes of cancer. The World Health Organization is uh, responsible for, for policy. So they are setting our evidence that we find what causes cancer and what doesn't cause cancer into recommendations for prevention. Um, the International Commission on Non-Ionizing Radiation Protection, this is an independent uh, panel that makes recommendations on protection guidelines for electromagnetic fields, but they are independent of uh, both IARC and also WHO. ICNIRP is an international commission of uh, experts on this kind of radiation, and ICNIRP has a huge power in this issue because ICNIRP has recommended the limits that most countries, at least in Europe, have adopted. And as pointed out by themselves, uh, they are only technical. They were never meant to be used as any kind of medical safety or biological safety. It's just a technical measure. But uh, governments and parliaments and so on uh, have uh, used them as a safety guideline, and they are definitely not. And those limits are based on an old paradigm from the American military in the 50s that considered that the only effects from this radiation is are thermal when the radiation is so high that it can heat uh, tissue. Los límites que se han establecido actualmente están en función de los efectos térmicos de la radiación y se han establecido en la, con el objetivo de garantizar que no se produzca un incremento de temperatura que pueda tener efecto biológico. En ese sentido me parece que son unos, eh, unos límites sensatos desde el punto de vista científico. I started training in 1960 uh, at the Royal Navy's Microwave Training School. And it was my specialism throughout the Royal Navy was looking at all aspects of microwave warfare. By the 60s, it was mostly understood. Some of the experiments done during the Cold War that the scientists found that they could cause severe psychiatric problems by changing the pulse frequency. Imagine you are jumping on a trampoline at your own bounce level. And imagine I weigh 56 stone and I jump on the trampoline and bounce at my rhythm. You will be forced to bounce at my rhythm. That is called entrainment. And that is what goes on when microwaves go into your brain. They change your own brain waves because they are bigger and heavier. Now, depending on the pulse frequency and the power can affect the heart's pulse rate, uh, how the eye sees, how you hear, bad behavior. It can stop their ability to learn, how your brain will operate. All of these can be done and they can fool doctors. With that, microwaves played a very big part in getting information during the Cold War. It was reported today that the State Department has sent a doctor to the U.S. Embassy in Moscow to see if Russian radioactive waves have caused three people to fall ill. If you beam microwaves at the window, my talking vibrates the glass and the microwaves rebound back. And if you pick those up, you can understand what is being said. So the Russians microwaved the American embassy to see what secrets they were talking about. But at the same time, as the microwaves were reflecting so the Russians could hear, they were also going through. And within 18 months, they found that the children had leukemia, the women had breast cancers, some of the men had cancers, and virtually the whole staff had to be changed. 
Tonight we have the first report of a death among American embassy employees in Moscow who were exposed to Soviet microwaves. A secretary who worked in the embassy between 1960 and 62 developed a mole on her face that later became cancerous. She died in 1968. What I realized uh, was that some of the pulses used by the communications industry are exactly the same as the pulses which are used for microwave warfare. It's not the temperature that is a problem, it's the effects of the electromagnetic waves on our system, on our cells and the immune system and everything. I've been working in telecom area since uh, the start in 1966 and uh, since uh, 1987 I was within different companies in Ericsson. When I was working in quality I saw a graph uh, showing increasing rates of melanoma, skin cancer, and we saw curves of increasing failure rates of products. That was a big problem, 100 million of crowns, for instance. Ja, men jag som lärare märker ju också, jag har jobbat som lärare i 40 år. Jag märker att barn idag är mycket mer okoncentrerade, splittrade, svårt att fokusera, sitta stilla, svårt att bara sitta, ha ja, tråkigt. ADHD-diagnoserna ökar. Men så länge som strålskyddsmyndigheten, den statliga, säger det är ingen fara med det här. Det är bara uppvärmningseffekten. Om det blir en för hög uppvärmningseffekt, då är det farligt för kroppen. Den här gardinen skyddar mot mikrovågor. Titta. 0,06. Okej. Okay. 0,8,2, ja, 8,3. Tar vi ändå närmare. Ja, det är det ungefär. 7, 8, så. Och så ner med den där igen då. Puff. I Stockholm, då är det så många sändare överallt. Det är så mycket. Det blir som en sörja av allting. Och då märker jag ingenting. Förrän jag kommer hem, då känner jag hur jag kan vara alldeles urlakad. Mm. 2003 så... Börjar jag få en väldigt konstig huvudvärk. Det är liksom vad som är tryck runt om huvudet. Och jag vaknar med den, hade den hela dagen, somnar med det. Jag, förstod, jag kände att det här är inte okej. Okay. Det här är inte okej. Okay. Någonting pågår. Nu blir det en ny fas som kommer, jag kommer in i. Och när det gäller barn, där är det väl... Det finns ju ingen som för deras talan. Och föräldrarna, de vet inte tillräckligt alltså. Så det bör göras försikt riskbedömningar och försiktighetsprincipen bör följas. Det görs inte. Money, money, money. Det är det det handlar om. Jag le regalaría un móvil a un niño sin la menor duda. Respecto a las ondas electromagnéticas no me preocupan lo más mínimo. Sinceramente a mí no me preocupa lo más mínimo. The protection guidelines we have at the moment would protect you from any risks that we have established. But whether for example you should recommend unlimited use by children that's a completely other issue. And I think even without strong scientific evidence you should apply common sense here and say it's a technology that we have not fully understood. It's it's a technology that you hold directly to the body. So we need more work um, uh, on this. When we talk about the reproductive system, there are a number of studies clearly showing that male sperm cells are badly affected actually, 
and that they lose their movement capacity, uh, their morphology is destroyed. And, but the most important study is maybe on fertility in the long-term run, where people have looked on different generations of mice and seen that in the future, after a certain number of uh, generations, the fertility was more or less completely gone. And that is, of course, a very serious uh, warning signal. And again, I'm surprised that no one is really paying any real attention to this. What we are now risking by microwaving the planet, we are saying we are prepared to risk all of the future generations of the world with genetic damage for today's profit margin. That is what we're risking. And it's, I'm not just talking people, the cells are identical to plants, animals, humans. So if you're damaging a human cell, you are automatically damaging the plant cells, the pollinating insects, over 200 of them. They are all affected, every single thing. There are some very interesting studies from India where they took mobile phones and put them near to beehives and that resulted in that the bees left, they moved away. A bee will normally navigate using the Earth's magnetic field. So what you have is a bee which is being disorientated and at the same time its immune system is starting to collapse. If that would be correct, then we just have to stop radiating these insects. I mean, that's crazy to do it in that sense. Only the future will tell. Hopefully, it will turn out to be safe, but that would mean that thousands of scientific papers all at the same time must be wrong, and that has never happened before in history. Several long-term investigations started that have been going on for years. These long-term studies uh, seems to be just a way to push the problem in front of you. Get time to make as much money as possible, not to have to take decisions today. It's just a question of when we should start to react. In 2009, uh, scientists met in Norway uh, because uh, scientists felt that the ICNIP guidelines were not sufficient to really protect health and life. And a special, pretty lengthy statement was published and it was suggested that uh, the current guidelines should be lowered at least 50 to 60,000 times compared to the ICNIP guidelines. The authorities, uh, experts, many of them know these problems, but gives free uh, space for the technology, for the industry to, to use their systems. At least I suspect that this uh, group, they are doing a job for the industry. appartient à l'ICNIRP. Et quand on regarde l'organigramme, on s'aperçoit que là aussi, il y a des conflits d'intérêts. 
la commission est trop liée au lobby. Je me suis aperçu que les experts qui disaient que ce n'était pas dangereux, souvent étaient financés par les opérateurs de téléphonie mobile. Et donc les normes qu'ils élaborent, elles sont en concordance avec ce que peut faire l'industriel à un moment donné. Ça, ça n'émet pas des recommandations pour dire le risque c'est zéro. Ça émet des recommandations qui jouent sur on accepte tant de cancers, tant envoyés de morts euh, par rapport à d'autres industries. Et donc c'est ce qu'on appelle un risque acceptable. An admittance that those limits from ICNIRP has been too high and that there are health risks below those limits is a serious threat also to this industry. There are lots of money uh, that have been invested in this system. Thousands of billions of euros. The consequences to drastically just forbid, for instance, uh, mobile phones would be drastic. Il y a tellement d'argent en jeu que euh, euh, l'information c'était de dire il n'y a pas de danger pour la population. Il n'y a aucun souci sur la santé. Les parlementaires conscients de ça et la commission euh, qui, qui défend le business. Vous voyez, on est dans le business, on n'est pas dans la protection sanitaire de la population européenne. He apantallado mi casa. Mis vecinos han quitado cosas que han podido ir quitando, ¿no? Pero cada vez la gente tiene más cosas inalámbricas, que luego me afecta el sueño, que ya por la noche no duermo, que ya al día sin te echa polvo, y así ya es diario. O sea, en una ciudad no puedo estar, porque yo no puedo circular por la ciudad de manera normal, y tampoco puedo estar en mi casa 100% bien. Los teléfonos móviles pueden producir cáncer. Es la conclusión de la Organización Mundial de la Salud y de la Agencia Internacional de Investigación del Cáncer que han asociado el uso de teléfonos móviles a un posible riesgo de cáncer cerebral. Anunciaron en Lyon que los campos electromagnéticos generados por las radiofrecuencias de los teléfonos se consideran posiblemente carcinogénicos para los humanos. Scientists from 14 countries have reversed those years of reassurance. Le fait que l'OMS ait remonté, si vous voulez, le niveau pour dire c'est possiblement cancérigène, au même titre que le bisphénol, que les gaz d'échappement ou que d'autres polluants, ça montre qu'il y a un vrai risque de cancer. Está clasificada en la misma categoría que el café. El café es también eh, potencialmente cancerígeno. O sea, eso quiere decir que eh, hay algún estudio en los cuales se ha sugerido la, la, la potencialidad de efecto nocivo y por tanto no se puede catalogar como absolutamente seguro. The classification of a possible carcinogen is the weakest scientific evidence we have. So um, in the future it with new scientific evidence, it can change in either direction. The general um, pattern, I would say, for such uh, warning signals is that they start at the low level and then they move upwards. So most likely in a few years' time, there will have been more data collected and we will probably see an uh, um, increase in the importance of these cancer classifications. Hopefully, I'm wrong, hopefully it will go in the other direction. It will turn out to be without any risk, but I would be a little bit surprised then. The World Health Organization changed the cancer classification mostly due to studies showing increased risk 
of brain tumors from mobile telephone use. Uh, those studies were made by Lennart Adell from the Örebro University in Sweden. And also the Interphone study, the World Health Organization 13 country study that also showed increased risk for brain tumors of mobile phones. I think that this radiation uh, clearly merited a higher classification because there are a lot of evidence showing cancer risk from this radiation. The problem is that the mobile phone industry has dominated the cancer research from this radiation so much. We have to make sure that the, that the industry and the research is clearly separated. And uh, of course I also think that uh, the industry has a responsibility uh, to support the research because they make all the profit from the technology. So, so they should be interested also in demonstrating that the technology is safe. And what we usually do in practice that we have a firewall between the funding and the research so that there's no direct link by contracts between the researchers and the industry. And that is a mechanism that uh, has shown to, to work very well. And that is all very well if, if uh, they had been independent, but uh, the problem is the connections between industry and these expert groups. Anders Albom is uh, considered to be one of the world's leading experts in the, this field. And he's a professor at the Karolinska Institute and he has led all Swedish export investigations uh, into this issue. He has also been an expert to the World Health Organization and he was part of the ICNIRP expert group that recommended the today's obsolete limits for mobile telephony. I think that the conclusions uh, drawn by Anders Ahlboom uh, went through a major ch change because earlier he was more careful about what he said. He didn't clearly dismiss the risks as he does today. And uh, that is very strange. So there's been a major change and I think uh, it is those conflicts of interest that he has that can explain why he dismisses the risks that he has clearly observed himself. Then I started to, to, to search further and I did, then discovered that his brother Gunnar Album had for many years been a lobbyist for the major Swedish mobile phone operator Telia Sonora in Brussels, while Anders Album at the same time was a so-called independent expert for many authorities in Sweden and also for the European Commission. Well, the article about the conflict of interest of Anders Almum led to his uh, non-participation in this expert evaluation of the cancer risks. And uh, after, after that, the mobile phone radiation was classified as possibly carcinogenic, which probably would have not have been the case uh, if Anders Almum would have been on this expert group. Et je m'aperçois qu'il y a deux discours. Il y a le discours des scientifiques indépendants qui disent « Oui, on a fait des études, il y a des études partout maintenant sur le plan international. » Et le groupe de travail qui euh, donne des conseils à la Commission européenne, c'est des gens qui utilisent l'argent européen pour leur laboratoire, qui font des études assez critiquables et qui sont du genre Mais on n'a pas assez d'études, il faut encore continuer. C'est-à-dire qu'ils gagnent du temps sur le dos de l'Europe. Et ils utilisent l'argent européen pour faire des études qui sont, je trouve, euh, de pas de très bon niveau. And it turns out that if you read a study, anyone on random, that say that these techniques are safe, 
uh, they are approximately four times more often financed by the industry as compared to studies saying there is a health effect, which I think is very sad in the sense that already when they were started, they had lost a lot of their credibility. A couple of months after the cancer classification at the International Agency for Research on Cancer, Anders Ahlbom's colleague Maria Feisting at the Karolinska Institute presented a study that was claimed to be the first study on mobile phone use and brain tumor risk for children. It is the Cephalo study and it's a study design that we call a case control study that so was conducted in four countries, Denmark, Sweden, Norway and Switzerland. The Interphone study did not include uh, any children or young people and uh, this is because uh, the study has started in the late 90s and uh, it was very few children that uh, used mobile phones at uh, that time. Maria Feisting claimed in the press release that the study's results were reassuring. But when you look into the study and the published results, you see continuously increased risk for brain tumor for children who had had a mobile phone subscription for the longest period. When you come to table four, you see here clearly that children who had used a mobile phone who had had a subscription for more than 2.8 years, they had a more than doubled increased risk of brain tumor. Furthermore, when you take a closer look at this study, you also see that they present results on use of cordless phones. When we started to study children, the cordless phones have become much more common. A lot of private households had a cordless phone, so the exposure from the cordless phone also becomes relevant. But they don't disclose clearly that they only studied the first three years of use of cordless phones. This is only uh, mentioned in a footnote below the table, which is uh, quite strange. I asked uh, Maria Feisty if she could send me a copy of the questionnaire that they used in the Cephalo study. She refused. And then I turned to the ethical board because I know that the ethical board at the Karolinska has to accept the study uh, design, including the questionnaire. And I received the questionnaire, a draft questionnaire of the Cephalo from the ethical board. And it appeared that they didn't include the strange restriction of uh, usage of cordless phones to only the first three years the child used it. This study is clearly manipulated. You, you, you can't imagine any serious uh, scientist asking uh, for only the first three years of use. Both the Cephalo and the Interphone study that they show increased risks of brain tumors for mobile phone users, both children and adults. So the results in the study, when you read them, they show something totally different than what is communicated to the broad public. Il y a trop d'argent en jeu. C'est énorme, c'est des milliards et des milliards d'euros. Et en plus, ils peuvent après acheter ceux qui veulent. Si vous avez un scientifique à un laboratoire qui n'est pas terrible, eh ben, il le finance, il aide, il fait des contrats avec eux. Et si vous avez un scientifique très sérieux qui fait une étude sur le danger, notamment, on a eu des exemples en France où il y avait un scientifique qui avait fait des études sur les protéines de stress liées au rayonnement électromagnétique, ben, il n'a plus du financement. Donc oui, ils jouent sur la carotte et le bâton. We realized that the only sort of um, safe rule here is that money is behind everything. It's always some political or economical or industrial uh, argument behind the curtains that will drive a development in a certain direction. This is one of the most influential and power, economic powerful industries in the world today. 
And it's not only about the telecommunications industry, it's also about the uh, defense and military industry. They also produce microwaves. They also use this technology and they have the same interests. This is a military area. Move away from the perimeter. I say again, this is a military area. Move away from the perimeter. This industry gives the most to governments than any other industry on the planet. It can help the government secret services. You have to make up your own mind because nowadays uh, all these scientific areas are heavily infested by uh, other arguments coming from politics, economy, industry and so forth. So don't trust us, trust yourself. Les politiques bougent. C'est parce qu'il y a des collectifs de riverains, vous voyez, des citoyens qui s'organisent et disent « Nous, on ne veut pas d'entendre. » Il faut pousser la Commission à faire un, une législation concernant euh, l'utilisation de la téléphonie mobile avec des recommandations et en diminuant les normes parce qu'elles sont beaucoup trop hautes et elles ne prennent pas assez en considération tous les risques. Il faut appliquer, je dirais, normalement dans tous les cas, le principe de précaution, lorsqu'il y a ce risque euh, qui peut conduire à des dommages irréversibles. If the precautionary principle would be implemented in this particular field, most of these gadgets would immediately be forbidden. Los efectos perjudiciales de, cual, de cualquier cosa están absolutamente en relación con la dosis. Entonces, eh, el, el principio de precaución tiene que estar eh, en relación con la dosis. Entonces, no es decir teléfonos móviles sí, teléfonos móviles no, no es eso. And in this situation of scientific uncertainty, it's now the national governments and uh, their institutions that are responsible for the Asian protection uh, who have to decide of uh, uh, what to do in uh, this time period of scientific uncertainty. As long as this health um, issue is off the agenda, it's very difficult indeed uh, to get any serious action taken by the courts. The courts really are not interested because they say the International Commission on Non-Ionising Radiation Protection says there's not a problem. It sounds a very good name. The International Commission of Non-Ionising Radiation Protection sounds great. And you think that's very important, but nobody knows how it's elected, how you're elected to it. There are no changes, apparent changes to its membership. I have a very good suggestion for it, and I would abolish it. And uh, I, I think it should be, it, it, people should be, that are on it should be accountable, they should be elected, and they should come from differing sources. It should not just be a self perpetuating group, which it is at present. Uh, and I know I've, I've met with many of them at stages. I have a lot of respect for them, but it's there is no patency and there is no, even itself, uh, the chairman of Vechnia, uh, Pavlovich, has said, well, we, you know, we are not, we shouldn't be regarded totally as just the only guideline, but they are regarded as the only guideline. I consider that those experts that are lying to the public and to the decision makers about what, about what the science has shown 
uh, of course they should be held responsible for for the, for those lies that, that they have produced during years. I think European action is, is, is perhaps the best line to take on this. I think for an individual government to go for it is more difficult. But uh, in the meantime, I think if, if companies or if areas are unhappy about masks going into a place or schools are unhappy in terms of the use of Wi-Fi, then I think there should be some attention paid to these concerns. Et là, le politique dit « Ah, danger !» parce qu'il y a une mobilisation citoyenne. Mais ça, pour moi, c'est ce qui va être le moteur d'un changement, si vous voulez, de paradigme, d'un changement au niveau des conflits d'intérêts, hein, d'un changement sur la protection euh, sanitaire des citoyens européens. Mon intervention en ces sujets en défense de personas afectadas por los campos electromagnéticos fue casual. Se trataba de una persona que yo conocía anteriormente que llevaba un pleito para tratar de que una antena de telefonía móvil no se instalara en su edificio. Hablamos del año 1997 aproximadamente y el juez nos estimó y se ratificó esa estimación en la audiencia provincial y esa antena no se colocó. Se informaron otros afectados de que había habido una sentencia favorable y ya entonces me pidieron que me ocupara de sus asuntos y entonces uno de ellos tuvo bastante relevancia porque conseguimos por primera vez en el Estado español y creo que posiblemente en Europa que un juez eh, paralizara el funcionamiento de una antena de telefonía móvil por problemas de salud. La defensa que realizan las compañías es negarlo todo en cuanto a afecciones. Sin embargo, las pólizas de seguros que tienen suscritas para sus instalaciones tienen cláusulas de exclusión muy llamativas que me permito leer textualmente. Exclusión uso de teléfonos móviles. No quedan cubiertas las responsabilidades legales con respecto a daños personales, enfermedad, incapacidad de cualquier tipo muerte, enfermedad mental, angustia mental, dolor mental o físico, trastorno o deterioro o desorden mental o físico o cualquier síntoma mental o físico causado o supuestamente causado o contribuido por el uso continuado de teléfonos móviles. ¿Por qué hay esta cláusula de exclusión si es una actividad total y absolutamente inocua? Lo más importante para los usuarios que utilizan esta tecnología es, desde mi punto de vista, que tengan información. Y es una asignatura pendiente por parte de la administración informar y formar a la población, sobre todo a la más vulnerable. Estamos hablando de los niños, estamos hablando de las personas enfermas, estamos hablando de los ancianos. Y que entonces, con toda la información en la mano, decidan. Runt om i Europa så vaknar det hela. Frankrike, biblioteken i Paris som tog bort wifi och master som rivs i Spanien och Israel och många länder börjar nu. Det skrivs om det och det tas upp. Wheelers line, Americans are dying. My own husband has a malignant glioma. Well, my advice to everybody is to investigate for themselves, to check the evidence and to check the facts about the, the dangers of this radiation and to try to reduce as much their uh, own exposure. If the antennas are bad, we don't put them on. It's up to all humans to, together in concert, try to solve all these issues. 
they should uh, go and find all the scientific results themselves. They are readily available on the internet. So it's very, very easy to find them. Some experts say they're seeing evidence of breast cancer that could be connected to where some women keep their mobile phones. When you take something that, and put it directly on the skin, it's high energy microwave radiation for a prolonged period of time. In young women with vulnerable developing breasts, we may have a perfect storm. The, the, the actual insert that people never read, frankly, that comes with the, with the phone, it does say exactly that. There's a, the BlackBerry, for example, warns to keep your phone at least 0.98 inches away from the body when transmitting. If you move it closer to your head, they say they can no longer guarantee that your phone isn't emitting more radiation than the FCC limit. For every millimeter away from the brain, you get a 15% reduction in radiation to the body. They should read, they should think, they should extract the necessary information, they should mold it together to a decision boiling down to their own private person. <laughs> Y estamos salvando nuestra dignidad. Y lo que sí que tenemos muy, 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 muy claro es que si luchamos puede que perdamos, pero si no luchamos ya hemos perdido. Antenas no y salud sí. Sí. El informe pericial creo que está ya listo. Según nos han dicho, para la semana que viene va a estar ya enviado. Sí, 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 podríamos verlos mañana, sí. ¿A qué hora te iría bien? Dentro de las acciones y actuaciones que llevamos en defensa de los afectados, pues está en la manera de lo posible incidir en que los responsables políticos adopten una posición garantista. Hay que tener en cuenta que una persona hipersensible es una persona que no puede estar eh, cerca de campos electromagnéticos. Entonces, ¿esto cómo se va a regular? ¿Esto cómo se va a resolver? Esto es ya el tabique medianero con la otra comunidad. ¿eh? Y entonces, esto ya es la terraza. Que ya te digo que la distancia es una cosa así, no, no hay más. Y es justo ahí mismo donde van a poner la antena. O sea que no hay... La diferencia es un metro, metro y medio. Bueno, vamos un momento a subir la terraza. Las compañías están en condiciones de dar servicio, que es un servicio público de interés, que nadie discute. Nosotros intentamos racionalizarlo, pero lo pueden dar emitiendo con muchísima menos potencia y, por lo tanto, con muchísimo menos riesgo para las personas que están expuestas. El colegio está aquí, ¿verdad? Aquí mismo, ya ves que no hay ninguna diferencia de distancia. Es este edificio de aquí. Con lo cual ahí tenemos el, el patio, ¿verdad? Sí, sí. Y, y exactamente los metros me parece que son 40. Hasta el, el punto medio del colegio son 40 metros. Con lo cual entraríamos en lo que es la, la cuestión de las zonas sensibles, que según la normativa son 100 metros. Claro. Claro, y, y ellos han hecho los locos, se han hecho los locos con el asunto. Claro, y en esos 100 metros deben de hacerse unos estudios para tratar de minimizar la exposición, etc. Teniendo en cuenta que son... Après, il y a une deuxième partie, c'est la reconnaissance par la Commission en faisant des signatures, des pétitions pour la reconnaissance des électro-hypersensibles. Quand vous avez le contact direct avec des gens qui souffrent, des gens qui ne supportent pas, par exemple, la proximité d'une antenne en relais, quand vous avez des gens qui deviennent électro-hypersensibles, qui ont des, vraiment des souffrances incroyables, et qu'à côté, vous avez une administration qui dit « ça n'existe pas ». Il faut que je constitue, je suis en train de le constituer, un groupe de parlementaires qui mène et qui font aussi du lobby. C'est-à-dire, à un gros lobby, il faut faire un autre lobby. Pour, et surtout, c'est s'associer les citoyens européens, vous voyez, pour faire monter la pression. Je n'ai pas tampoco la solution. Et je n'ai pas en contre de ninguna technologie. Mais si il y a problèmes, ou conseguimos que se préserven espacios donde gente que tenemos este problema mínimamente podamos vivir, 
y buscamos alternativas o hacemos un uso más responsable, como se está hablando de otros problemas medioambientales, o realmente va a haber gente que no podamos vivir en este planeta. The first recognition of electro hypersensitivity in Sweden was in 2000. These people with electro hypersensitivity uh, started to get governmental money, governmental funds to run their different organizations and so forth. Hello. Okay. Oh. Claro, porque luego este problema de salud también es caro. Necesitas cosas que cuestan mucho dinero. ¿no? O bien de medic medicinas que no te cubre la seguridad social, complementos alimenticios o vitaminas o tal. O telas que yo utilizo para protegerme y así, ¿no? A nivel económico es un, es un gasto importante, ¿no? Det har börjat bli mer hotfullt för telekombranschen. Det kommer upp rapporter från Indien, från Kina och många, många ställen nu att det här existerar. This particular group has been extremely badly treated. And they have been neglected and still are in most countries. And at many times they have been really harassed. Och man i de stora dagstidningen, den Sveriges stora dagstidning, där är det verkligen går de hårt åt elöverkänsliga så att det ska spridas. Så att det blir något löjeväckande över de där foliehattarna. Och eh, jag tror att det är ett symptom för nu, om man säger, innan det hela kommer att spricka. Nu är de desperata. Close to 50% will have one or the other type of sensibility uh, within uh, the next uh, five, ten years. So we will see. If we get over 50% sensitive, then we can start doing something. Para mí la caravana no es la forma de vida. O sea, es como la transición para buscar un espacio y un lugar donde yo pueda vivir con salud. Pero no es fácil. Me gustaría que como persona me vieran como una persona normal. Porque yo me siento una persona normal. También desearía que la gente pensara que es una discapacidad real. ¿o? Realmente me supone una alteración tan fuerte de mi salud que no tengo más remedio que, que evitarla. Si a mí me dicen que yo tengo que vivir todo el tiempo bajo el efecto que a mí me producen estas radiaciones, yo no lo podría soportar. Yo preferiría morirme. Te tengo ganas de vivir y estoy luchando por eso. It's been years since uh, the cancer classification and it's a great deception that there has been no uh, steps towards authorities or mobile phone industry recommending people to take uh, precautionary measures to handle this radiation. Instead, nothing has been done. Business goes on as usual. People are not warned about the cancer risks. Children are increasingly using this technology. Uh, I think it's a completely health disaster going on and people are not informed about the risks. Mobile phones, computers, computer screens and so on. From a biological point of view, they are just toys. They are not life necessities. And to have that kind of very harsh arguments and threats and discussions about toys uh, that's for me a warning sign, really, 
And if you look around in the world today, you do realize that the needs are very, very different. And the needs today is about clean water, clean air, food that we can eat without risk. It's about love, compassion, understanding, respect. And uh, they are very seldom actually on this economic agenda. Primary word is growth. We should have more and more and more and more of everything, you know. And uh, that's from a biological point of view very odd and scary. Il faut pas être addictif. C'est-à-dire, il faut pas penser que toute technologie est bonne pour pour sa personne. Et moi, je fais confiance à la fois à l'intelligence collective et au sens de la personne pour dire euh, halt. On n'est pas d'accord pour aller dans cette voie qui nous qui nous fait euh, qui nous fait devenir des robots, voyez, par rapport à des gens qui nous euh, qui nous manipulent. Et sen går inte på att du blir lyckligare om du hela tiden skaffar dig mer och mer prylar. Du blir inte lyckligare. My advice to those interested in this uh, is simply don't use your phone too much. I, I, am, I have a mobile phone myself and I'm using it most to take pictures because it's a good camera on it. Donc, c'est ensemble. Si j'avais un message à dire, c'est ensemble. Tous les gens qui sont sur le plan européen, que ce soit les Espagnols, les Italiens, les Français, etc., eh ben, il faut qu'on reprenne le pouvoir sur des gens qui veulent nous dicter leurs priorités. Si on veut être vraiment safe, then one has to go back to natural background levels. Uh, which were around like for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. You can have solutions that are not dependent on radiation. And maybe in the future, if you come back in a hundred years time, uh, then we will have a completely other society where the progress has meant stepping backwards and stepping backwards for life. This industry is considered to be so important to society and to the economy that we will have to have a lot of victims, a lot of dead bodies on the table until we take steps to reduce the risks and the exposure.